1 John chapter 3. God is a good God. Can I have just a moment before we read this scripture? You know, I deserve nothing from God. What I have, I don't deserve. I look to my right and I see my daughter as a worship minister. I look to my left and I see my lovely wife holding my grandbaby. And in the middle, I see my family. <laughs> I see my family that God has given me, and I love each and every one of you. God is a good God. <laughs> First John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Behold what manner of love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. Just simple words cannot express what you've grown in our hearts, the gratitude that we have for your free grace, your mercy, and your kindness. Lord, for maturing us, for raising us up as sons of God. We thank you so very, very much. Now, Father, we'd ask you that you'd bless the offering today, those that give in support of this ministry here in the worship room, those watching across the online experience, that you would bless these souls and these households. Lord, bless them not only financially, bless their bodies, bless their children. Bless everything that their hands touch, O oh God, and do it in such a way that they know God Almighty is active in their life. Father, I ask you that you would enable me this morning to preach on this subject matter, to make a, a clear and a certain sound that your people might be motivated to go a little deeper into the things of God. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The Apostle John responded perhaps more strongly to the concept of love than any of the other apostles. His, his uh, gospel is different, and his epistles really, uh, one of the themes of his epistles is love. He, he responded well to that. And so when he writes this in 1 John, he's being very clear to you and I. We read it, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. And if you're reading too fast... You think that the subject matter is that God loves us. And that's not what he's really talking about. It's included, but that's really not what he's talking about. Sometimes we satisfy ourselves with a little, little nursery ditty, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. And that's, that's absolutely accurate, that's true. But you don't stop there. You see, God is an infinite being. For him to be infinite, every characteristic of his personality must also be infinite. All of his attributes are infinite. John tells us in one of his epistles, God is love. It doesn't mean that uh, man came up with the concept of love and God fit himself in it. It means that our concept of love we got from looking at God. If there was no word as love whatsoever, God would still be love. And John tells us here, he's not just, we, we don't want to read this and just say, well, God loves us. That's wonderful and that's true and that's good, but that's not what the scripture is saying. First, he begins by saying, behold. The word behold means stop, grab all of your attention and your focus and put it right here. He's saying, get everything off your mind. Pay attention to what I'm getting ready to say. And then he goes on to say, behold, what manner of of love the Father hath bestowed upon you. It's not the fact that God has bestowed his love on you. He's saying set your focus on what manner of love. Look at the quality and the quantity. Look at the perfection of the love that he has bestowed upon you and I that would take us from wherever you started at, which was not good, and, and adopt you into the family of God. Make you a full family member with all the rights. Get that. You are a child of the creator of everything. <laughs> you didn't deserve that. You didn't work for it. I didn't work for it. God just gave it to us. He says, behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. 
That, that means you didn't deserve it, you didn't work for it, you didn't earn it. It is not based on your performance whatsoever. It's based in God. God loves us not because of who you or I are. He loves us because of who he is. See, one of the things as Christians, as maturing Christians, we got to get in our mind is that when you have a misstep, and missteps are not good. When you have a failure, failures are not good. But when you have one, untether your performance from the love of God. Those two are not tethered together. While we were yet sinners, wasn't even trying to live for God. We were smoking dope, drinking liquor, and having illicit sex. Don't, don't look down. It, it happened. You just own it. It happened. <laughs> While we were doing all of that, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. When you begin to press into what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon you, it strengthens you through every trial that you go through. I don't know what's coming. The way society is breaking down, I don't know what's coming. But this, I do know this. God loves me. You can't talk me out of it. I've been through too much. I've seen too much. I, I know too much. You can't talk me out of that. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called his own children. Now, if you're not careful, you'll, you'll think that, well, yeah, you know, I got saved. I confessed with my mouth. I believed in my heart. I became a Christian. So, yeah, of course, God loves me. But you started too late. You don't start the day you got saved. Go back. Go back to where we don't like to go that often. Paul says it this way in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Here's how the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul lays it out for us. I'm going to let you get there because you need to see these first two words. Oh, they're on the screen. And you, <laughs> and you, when I say you, I mean us. The Holy Spirit is saying of, of all of God's different creations that he have, and you hath he quickened. And we are the most undeserving, made in the very image of God, but we've rioted and rebelled against him days without number. And the Holy Spirit is saying, and you hath he quickened, made alive. You hath he quickened who was dead in trespasses and sins. Notice this, when something is dead, that means it's the worst possible situation. It doesn't mean you're a little twisted or a little off-center. It means it can't get no worse. <laughs> That was our moral position before we came to God. And, and Paul in Ephesians says, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. And then the Holy Spirit takes a moment to lay out to help us to remember where we came from. Because after you've been saved for a while, it's easy to forget. Come on, somebody talk back to me. <laughs> after you walk with God for a little while, it's easy to forget where he brought you from. But I remember a deep ditch back there. I remember a horrible pit that I came out of. So he reminds us where in in time past you, the one who God quickened, you walked according to the course of this world. Listen, according to the prince of the power of the air, that is Satan he's describing. He's saying that prior to our salvation experience, we walked in concert and consistent with Satan himself. Now, as I look back at my life, I can plainly see it wasn't right. As Christians, we don't like to admit it. And I don't think it, most people in the world, there's a few, but most wouldn't want to admit the fact that uh, without Jesus, I walk consistent with the will of the devil. Well, that's not an easy confession to make, but that the Holy Spirit is confessing it for us. He goes on to say, uh, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is con now continuing to work in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our lifestyle. Our conversation is lifestyle. In times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and we were by our very nature, the sin nature, children of wrath. Meaning that had Jesus not come, the, the only course God had for us is to put us forever in the lake of fire, not based on what we did, but based on our very nature, the bent that we have towards wrongdoing. We were by nature the children of wrath, just like everybody else out there in the world. But God. <laughs> 
but God. I would have been lost. I would have been lost in my sin, but God. I had no way to save myself, no way to extricate myself from the mire of sin and lust that I was in, but God, who is rich, super abundant, abounding in his mercy. But get this now, but God, who is rich in his mercy for, because of, because of his great love wherewith he hath loved us. In other words, the reason that God extended mercy to the human race was because he loved us. The reason that God continues to put up with us even since we got saved, you hadn't walked in perfection since the day you got saved. We had stumbles, missteps, we, we mess up at times, but God's great love tells us come boldly to the throne of grace and cry out for help and mercy in the time of need. See, that will help you the next time you stumble. The next time you, your mouth speaks before your brain thinks. The, the next time an incident occurs in your life, remember your performance is not tethered to the love of God. I watch my, my son and my daughter with uh, my little grandbaby. And she's just now getting to the age where she's beginning to express her own personal will. She's in the pre-be bad time <laughs> and I watch the tender care especially uh, that, that, they, that they take over her I mean they won't even let her walk by she can walk a little bit now they won't let her walk by herself she could fall and get a carpet burn it's going to happen it's going to happen but, but they're just everything but the, the same parents that love that baby so much when she acts up or cuts up or something else they change their uh, th their attitude towards her to correct her, but their love doesn't stop. See, and when we stumble and we mess up, God does whatever he has to do, do to correct us, but don't get that confused with his love. Here, here's the way I, I, for my own benefit. If God loved me so much when I was a liquor drinker, a dope smoker, a woman runner, a liar, a thief, and just an all-around bad guy. If he loved me enough to save me there, and I've walked with him now for 35 years growing in grace, and when I have a misstep now, he's not going to throw me out. He brought me from that to bring me to here to take me to there. He loves you this morning. He loves you. He said, I've loved you with an everlasting love, and with loving kindness have I drawn you to myself. No, we don't want missteps. We don't want failures. That's, that's not the Christian heart doesn't, doesn't want that. But if you have one, don't get that confused to God's love has changed for you. You can right now, some of us in here right now, especially if you have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you can act a fool and say, that's it, I'm done. I'm done, I'm going back to sin. God's going right back out there in the street with you. He ain't going to let you go by yourself. You can go out there and get drunk. Jesus will go right down beside that lick and let you know I'm married to a backslider. <laughs> You're not getting away. You've been bought with a price. You're no more your own. Amen. God's not going to easily let you go to hell. You can't turn off the light that he lit in your soul very easily. You can do the drugs. You can do the alcohol. You can try to quench that light. But if you've ever been born again, that light is going to shine. And you'll be the most miserable backslider on the planet until God brings you back into the fold. Hallelujah. Now, that's not scripture. I live that. That's why I know I, I've lived that. But God, who is rich in mercy. Now, here's what I want you to see. And we'll use a scripture in Deuteronomy chapter 7. And I want you to see that it's not about you. The love of God is not about you. It's not about me. We are just the beneficiaries. We, we are just the ones who benefit from the character of God. Don't, but don't think it's about you. In Deuteronomy, the Lord makes this uh, very plain. He's talking to national Israel, but the same concept uh, can be expanded to, to the modern church. He says in verse 7, The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than other people, for you were the fewest of people. Now, he's talking about nat national Israel in terms of their numbers of, of their nation compared to the Egyptians and other people. 
But the concept can be expanded to you and I. Let me read it that way. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were better than any other people because in reality you were the worst. <laughs> we, we are Gentiles for the most part. Everything in, we're Gentiles. We weren't even in the covenant. He says, so don't get it twisted. He did not put his love on you because of anything you or I brought to the table. The next sentence, but because the Lord loves you. Meaning that he is the source, the motivation, and the reason that you are receiving the love of God is nothing that you and I have done to earn it. Now that should help you the next time that you're going through a trial. In the ministry, I, I'm constantly bombarded with things that uh, have an emotional impact. You know, they can, they, can, they can get next to you. And I sometimes have to remind myself, wait a minute. Yeah, this situation is not cool, but, but God loves me. Amen, I can rejoice in that. And it, it causes me to go to him in those times of trial, knowing that I'm coming to a loving father who, who paid a fearful price that I might have fellowship with him. And I can cast all my care upon him, knowing that because of his love, he cares for me. Now, this may seem like uh, elementary teaching or, or tutorial preaching, but God's love is deeper than just the surface. You understand that everybody would when they come to understand God loves me. Okay, I got that. God loves me. But you have to define what that love is. It goes more deeper than you really know. It goes deeper. Only, the only way you can plumb the depth of God's love is as you mature as a Christian. As you grow up in the things of God, you begin to realize this, God's love is solid enough that it can hold me. I, I'm not walking around like this just wondering, can, no, 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 God's love can hold me. It's, it's stout enough that I can put my weight on it. I can put my family on it. I can put my whole world, I can put my death on it. I can say, listen, I know God loves me, and if I perish, I perish. But God loves me. Hallelujah. We got we to get a hold of that. 1 John again, chapter 4, and let's uh, look at verse 9. John is saying, and sometimes it helps, especially in Paul's writing, but as well in John's, is to slow down when you're reading and parse the words. Don't read sentences, read words. He says, verse 9, in this was manifest the love of God towards us. What he's saying is that in what I'm about to say, God's love was introduced and made open and understandable in what I'm about to say. That's what John is saying. In this was manifest the love of God towards us because God sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. Meaning that his love caused him to send Jesus Christ into the world so that you and I could be the beneficiaries. So that we could be benefited, we could be helped and strengthened. He sent his, his only begotten son. And he didn't send him just go down there and tell him I'm coming or uh, uh, they're blessed. He sent them to die on a cross, receive their punishment so that, I can, so that they can be benefited by my love. Herein is love. He's defining it again. He's saying this is what love is. Not that we love God. It wasn't based on, you know, when we read that scripture, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We read that and we have to understand, for God so loved the world, not a world full of Christians, a world full of evil blasphemers that, that would happily cuss God to his face as he sent them to hell. We, what you see in the world and society right now, that was inside of every one of us. Whether it was expressed or not, it was in us. All this weirdness that you see, all this confusion that you see, that is the human heart on display. So God sent his only begotten son in the world to die on a cross for people who were not like him. Who, who had no regard for the things of God. Hearing his love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us. And he sent his son to be the propitiation. 
meaning to uh, be the sacrifice for our sins. So the point that I'm trying to make this morning is don't just accept at a very summary fact that God loves you. Dig down into his love. You know, it's like if you're married or if you have a, 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 a girlfriend or a boyfriend, for those that are uh, not as old, and they tell you, hey, I love you. Really? How much? If, you're, if your spouse asks you, how much do you love me? What would you do? Go buy her a, a, a thing of, ro of roses? Or, you know, what, what would you do? Go buy her a piece of jewelry? How would you commend that love? How would you express that love if you were called upon to show me how much do you love me? Well, I'll, I'll buy you a rock. I'll get you a big one. I, I'll, I'll spend a lot of money and maybe even go broke. I'll, I'll buy you a big rock. God bankrupted heaven. <laughs> he sent heaven's best amongst us. He said, I want you to go from the highest of the heights and I want you to go down and manifest yourself in a, in a manger, in a, in, a, in a stable where the cows urinate and where the cows defecate. I want you to manifest yourself there as a little baby. I want you to humble yourself so that Mary has to change your diaper and breastfeed you. I want you to grow up without any notoriety and I want you to become a full-grown man and I want you to go to the whipping pole. I want you to be nailed to a cross by the very creation that you came to die for. <laughs> That's how God manifests his love towards us. You got to get a hold of that. And so, so I, I, I exhibited a bad attitude the other day. If in fact that's what you did. Do you think that that undoes everything that God has done to get you to where you're at? Oh no, repent from that thing and say, God, I'm sorry. Cleanse me from all inward unrighteousness and help me to go and sin no more and keep walking with God. Keep walking with God. No matter what you go through, no matter how you fail, get up out of that mud hole, put one spiritual foot in front of the other one and keep walking with God. Don't feel sorry for yourself and don't condemn yourself. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Understand that God loves you. It's more than just a surface love. It goes deep. It goes from everlasting to everlasting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14 says this. And this is the Apostle Paul writing. He says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Now get this now, let's go slow. To be strengthened with might by his spirit, capital S, that's the Holy Spirit, strengthened with might by his spirit in the inward man. He's saying that his prayer was that the Holy Spirit would inwardly strengthen us as Christians so that, so that Christ himself might dwell in our hearts. By faith. So that, do you, see, do you see how you put a so right in front of that? It's a run-on sentence. That Christ might dwell in our hearts by faith so that we, being rooted and grounded in love, might be able to comprehend. Now get this. Until that process happens that you're strengthened with might in the inward man, you are not able to comprehend the love of God. It takes, a, the, the maturation process has to happen. You have to grow in grace, grow in the, in the things of God, and then you begin to understand more than just a superficial level how rock solid this love is. That you may be able. See, if you're not rooted and grounded in love, and, and here's what you have to understand, it's not just rooted and grounded in love like I have love for my fellow man. Or my, no, that's not what he's talking about. You're rooted and grounded in the knowledge of God's overwhelming and infinite love for you. I said infinite. I mean, it don't run out. <laughs> so I said, well, I messed up, you know, 5,000 times. It don't run out. Look away from your 10,000 failures and look to the head of your high priest. He has a golden miter that sits in his, in, in his turban. It says, holiness unto the Lord. Jesus is your holiness. Jesus is your righteousness. 
This is what God has provided for us based on the fact that he loves us. I didn't earn any of it. I don't, I'm not worthy to stand on this stage. God's love has me standing on this stage. I'm not worthy to walk in the blessings that I have in my life. God's love has me walking in these blessings. And my, my job then is that he loves me. I'm going to walk in his love. I'm going to walk in, in obedience to him. That you may be able to comprehend <coughs> with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height. He's talking about that you might know the vastness of God's love. But now, again, you don't just go there because you read this scripture. The Holy Spirit has to strengthen you in the inner man so that Christ might dwell in your heart so that you might be able to comprehend the love of God. <laughs> Which passes knowledge. Okay, get this now. What I'm preaching to you today, I'm giving you knowledge. But what this is talking about is unspeakable. It, you, you, there's no human language that can express the love of God. It takes you to a place. When Paul went to the third heaven, he said, I saw things that were unspeakable, unlawful to speak. It wasn't because the law said don't speak it. It's because human vocabulary cannot express it. Okay, right here. Think how many times you failed since you got saved. Think how many times, think how badly you failed God. But yet he never brings it up. He never beats you up. He never tells you that you're unworthy. If, if you're hearing that, you're not hearing the Holy Spirit. He's always kind to you. He's always encouraging. He's always picking you up. Oh, the love of God. That you may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ. Here's what Jesus said. Greater love hath no man than this. <laughs> he said it does not exist. Greater love hath no man than this that he would lay down his life for his friend. And you are my friends is what he's saying. In fact, one scripture, I don't think I have it here. Uh, no, I took it out. But the scripture says that Preadventure for, for a good man, someone might die. And maybe perhaps for a righteous man, others would die. But it says, but while we were yet sinners, worthless, <laughs> Christ died for us. Amen. That, that's the love of God. So whatever you're, whatever you're struggling with, whatever... Uh, you, battle you may be going through, anchor yourself in the fact that God's love is immovable. See, God set up the system so that your failures can't break it. You know, as you start in Genesis and you look at all the covenants that God made, he made covenants with Abraham, he made covenants with David, and every covenant that he made was broken by man. All of them were broken by man. So God set up this last everlasting covenant. It's called the everlasting covenant because it can't be broken. Because all the others, the Abrahamic, the Davidic, all the other covenants, God would hold up his end and whoever the other, Abraham or David, whoever it was, would hold up their end of the covenant. But when man kept falling, the covenant would be broken. But the everlasting covenant, God the Father holds up his end of the covenant. God the Son holds up this end of the covenant. You may have a misstep, but you can't make the covenant break. It's out of your hands. <laughs> God loved us so much, he took away our ability to fail. Now, that doesn't mean you might not have, you, you may have missteps, but our ability to, to dissolve or break the covenant, he took that out of our hands. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He loves us this morning. Musicians, would you come back? He loves us this morning. For God so loved the world. For God loved the world so much. A world full of anti-God people. He loved the world so much, he gave his only begotten baby. That whosoever, all they had to do, all they have to do is believe on Jesus Christ and they shall not perish, but shall come into everlasting life. 
when you're going through, when your feet are in the mud hole and you're trying to stand back up, be secure in the fact that God's love is infinite and eternal and his love is not tethered to your performance. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please, all over the room this morning. Father, we thank you and we love you this morning. Lord, the covenant that you've established through the blood of your son is unspeakable. How blessed we are, O oh God, that you've bestowed your love upon us. How blessed we are, God, that the moving, the operation of your spirit, that we would draw nigh unto you, that we would draw close. Father, help us today. Would you stand to your feet all over the room? Help us today, God, that we might press deeper <coughs> to our knowledge of your word. Help us today to come closer. Come on, won't you pray this morning? Just reach out to the Lord. And just ask him, Lord, help me to better understand what you've, what you've given, the depth with which you love me. Help me to understand. Help me to press in, God. Draw me. Draw me, Lord, with loving kindness. Come on, just reach out to the Lord, won't you, this morning? Hallelujah. We just seek you right now, Lord God. Draw us closer to you, to your heart. You are the God who is love. Oh, Lord, we just want to be close to you. We want to know you. We want to know your heart. We want to know who you are, Lord God. Reveal yourself to us. Help us to be like you, to be loving, to love others, Lord God. We thank you that you laid down your life for the brethren. No greater love has any man than this, that he lays down his life for the brethren. Help us to also live a life like Jesus, to lay down our lives and to love other people as you have loved us. To demonstrate that love to a lost and a dying world, Lord God. We thank you for your love and mercy to give us what we did not deserve. Grace, kindness, mercy, forgiveness, deliverance, healing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We praise you. We thank you. We thank you, we thank you for the word this morning. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Praise God. What a good God we serve who is love. Not just what he does, it's who he is. Praise God. Well, we thank you for joining us in the house. We thank you for joining us online. I um, want to let you know, Brother Mo Jacob had back surgery this week, so we encourage you to please pray for him. Um, he is getting better. He seems to be doing just fine. So uh, pray for him this week. If you, if you remember, we also have two cards in the lobby for Mo. Just sign one of the cards and just let him know, you know, we're praying for you. Get well. That kind of thing. Just let them know we love them. And uh, with that, we want to let you know we love you. God bless you. And we'll see you not Wednesday, but next Sunday. God bless. Thank you for watching. And please subscribe. You can also find more of our videos in our archives at ChristUnveiled.org. We'll see you next time.